Hollywood Brown, let's freaking go, dude! How about go? Yo, one more look. Just, oh, it just, it just looks so good. Red, yellow, Chiefs playing for a winning team. Oh my God. Come on now. Come on now. This is not a typical time to go live. I even freaking care. It's 11 p.m. I do not care. Thought this signing was going to be coming. Been working on a video for it all day long. We just dropped it about 15 minutes ago. Me and Troy scripted everything minus the contract details, made the thumbnail, did the jersey swap, had the title, everything ready because I told him, Troy is my editor if you don't know, I said, Troy, the Chiefs are signing Marquise Hollywood Brown. I don't know when, but he's getting signed. And uh, literally was about to eat dinner, a second dinner. I had my food on the table. It's 9.40 p.m. I know that's kind of late. 9.40 p.m. Sean Peterson texts me, Hollywood time. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Look at Twitter, tell my wife, love you. I gotta go downstairs. I put my entire food in the fridge. I haven't even touched it. Do not care. Let's freaking go, man. How's everybody feeling? It's like, it's, it's a much needed signing. Let's just put it that way. Like they needed to refresh the wide receiver room. You had to get it done. You were, you had a couple guys go off the board and you needed people, right? You had, uh, even just today, the Bills signed Curtis Samuel to a, uh, yeah, Curtis Samuel to a three-year deal, 24 million. Um, Darnell Mooney went off the board. A big one yesterday, I think it was, Calvin Ridley went off the board, four-year deal for like $52 million to the Titans. And we're over here like, okay, well, the Chiefs right now have Rasheed Rice, dog, Justin Watson, Cool, wide receiver four. Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony. I don't know what Sky's gonna do next year. I don't know if Tony's gonna be on the team next year. Justin Watson's fine for a wide receiver four. Uh, Rashi Rice is gonna be great. We have Travis Kelsey as well. We know that, but we needed more. The Chiefs aren't done yet either. I would not be surprised to see them add one more receiver in free agency, even if it's a low profile guy on a vet men type deal. And then they're gonna go and get another one in the draft, probably pretty freaking early. Um, very happy about the signing. He is a field stretcher, super quick guy. He'll stretch the field better than MVS. He's a lot shorter. He's 5'9". MVS was 6'4", but he runs like a 4.2740. This dude is not Tyreek Hill, but he's still pretty fast. And Andy Reid loves the gadgety guys, man. And he can do more than that, but he loves the quick little guys that you can use in motion behind the line of scrimmage. And you can do all kinds of fun stuff with them. He's going to offset... Travis Kelsey, Rashi Rice, because Rice's role is going to expand. So you can do a lot with uh, Marquise Brown, and I'm pretty excited about it. He has had some injuries here and there. He's coming off of a down year with the Cardinals. Like, that's why they got him for a one-year one year deal up to $11 million. It's probably a base salary of like six, seven, eight million million with incentives bringing it up to eleven. This is absolutely fantastic, guys. Um, great news. I've already dropped the video on it. So I, we can go as in-depth as you want, but the eight-minute video that I dropped 15 minutes ago, it goes into everything. There's video all over the place. We talk about his college career. We go into it and explain why he fits really well in the Chiefs. Make sure to check that out if you haven't. Um, but I did want to go live and just kind of celebrate with you guys. And uh, I just think it was a much-needed move for the Chiefs. And... Uh, would just love to hear your guys' thoughts. Like doing a video is great, but going live with you guys and interacting is even better. Sean with the 20 bomb, dear God, let's freaking go. Best case scenario, yes, please. Then they hit one in the draft, Sean. They hit one in the draft. It's gonna be the best case scenario. You already know, man. Thanks so much for the 20 bomb and for your text. I actually saw your text first, and I said to Brand and Darth Bane. I saw they texted me as well, but I just saw yours first. I said, Hey, if news breaks tonight, text me. <laughs> If news breaks and I text me because I'm tired of looking at my phone every five seconds and uh, they text me as well. Gaming with the five gaming for four. Thanks, man. Love Pat. Mah uh, I love Pat Mahomes, bro, but I'm a Packers fan. I really respect you guys. Hey, much respect to the Packers, dude. Uh, I got nothing to say, but respect really. Jordan Love got it done against the Chiefs in the regular season last year. Much respect uh, to the Packers, brother. You guys have had like a long history of great quarterbacks and Jordan Love is looking like 
a, you know, he's got big shoes to fill, uh, to fill going from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers, who's running for vice president. Just kidding. I don't really know if he is or not, but um, he's got big shoes to fill, but you're still a good team, man. Young team. You guys made some good moves um, in free agency as well. The Chiefs kid with the five, so glad we got him. Now we need to go get one of my Longhorn wide receivers in the draft. Who do you want? Which one? What the frick? Trent Green? Trent Green? Like the Trent Green? That would be crazy. Uh, with the five. Thanks, man. Veach absolutely nailed this contract. Maybe gives a chance at keeping Sneed after a solid wide receiver one. Dude, if you could somehow keep Sneed too, like, dude, I'm all in. Can we keep Sneed? I'm going to ask. I'm going to say, I'm going to ask on Twitter. Can the Chiefs still keep Sneed? I DM'd Hollywood Brown, by the way, guys. I DM'd Hollywood Brown earlier this week. And this is what I said. He didn't really say anything, so I don't I don't normally show the DMs, but I just wanted to show you uh, this real quick. Actually, just let me let me do this. I'll screenshot it because there's really there's really not much in the DMs here. But I thought it was cool that he reacted to it. This is the better way to do it. I DM'd him earlier this week, and I said, "Chiefs Kingdom will see you soon." I did put like a fingers crossed emoji, like I'm hoping. He responded with like a. Like a, I don't even know what that reaction is, but like a hands up, heck yes, embracing reaction. And I was like, okay. And then when you had Pretty Ricky 213 on Twitter projecting almost every single free agency move to the T, he's missed on a couple things, but most things have been right. I was like, he said, Marquise Brown is coming to Kansas City. And I was like, all right, I'm down. Let's freaking go then. And he got it done. Let's go. Talking to, when I say he, Ricky didn't get it done, but the Chiefs, Veach got it done. RCJH with the five. His uh, QBs the last two years, Kyler Murray, Josh Dobbs, Colt McCoy, Trace McSorley, David Wow, <laughs> Andy Lee, and Clayton Toon. He's a sleeper. Yeah, and that wasn't even a knock to him when I said he's coming off of a down year in, 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 from Arizona. Like, it's just facts. He's had a down year in all categories last season. It's not like MVS's down year last year. He had Patrick Mahomes. You know what I mean? But he he battled through a lot of adversity, and it's it's a train wreck over there. So it wasn't a diss to him. It was just kind of reality. He's coming off of a down year, hurt his stock a little bit, and it did help the Chiefs a little bit as far as what the contract looks like. It's kind of like Juju signing that one-year deal with KC a couple years ago. He did had a he had a bounce back season in Kansas City and then got a three year whatever twenty six thirty million dollar deal somewhere around there with the Patriots. Um, so maybe Marquise Brown is hoping to be able to do that as well. And I'm sure he wants a Super Bowl ring because if you go to his Instagram, if you go to Marquise Brown's Instagram, look at this. Look what he shared. He shared this, but look at this text from Andy Reid. Hollywood, think red today, KC red with diamonds. <laughs> he threw some diamonds in there. He better give Marquise Brown some diamonds. Threw some diamonds in there. Signed Andy Reid. I love Hollywood Brown's response, by the way. He said, yes, sir. Love the sound of that. Think ho he, <laughs> he responded to Andy saying, think red Think Casey with diamonds. He said, think Hollywood Brown lights camera action with two <laughs> rocket emojis. Okay, that's that's actually crazy to respond to Andy Reid like that, but I like it. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's freaking hilarious, man. American 1020 with the 20. Three Pete, OMG. Let's freaking go. Lights camera action. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we just looked at when he shared that response. That is hilarious. Thanks so much for the, the 20 bomb, brother. Barry with the 20 said, let's freaking go. Brand with the two said, Ricky linking Jets and uh, Mike Williams for $8 million a year. Could happen. Could happen for sure. He hasn't, he hasn't missed a lot, so it very well could happen. Barry, thanks again for the 20, American 1020, RC, JH, Trent, the Chiefs kid. So glad. Yeah, yeah. Gaming, Sean, appreciate y'all. We got more. We got more. Uh, ENG with the 20 bomb as well. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate that a ton. And then you got Casey with the 10. Uh, we don't have a left tackle locked up, do we? No, we don't. 
Not yet. Dang, with Mahomes as your QB, uh, shouldn't we be a little more serious concerned about that position? Well, yes. Yes, for sure. Thing is, you unless you're going to bring in Tyron Smith, which they still could, by the way, they still could bring in Tyron Smith. There's just not a lot of uh, free agents out there and available that that the Chiefs can really roll with. So you've got a couple of options if you're the Chiefs right now. You either go for a big swing and trade somebody. I don't trade for somebody. I don't think that's going to happen. You kind of see how the chips fall in free agency, go into the draft, hoping to get a tackle as early as you possibly can. And then depending on how that plays out, you then sign somebody after the draft like they did last year for Donovan Smith. Um, and then you have Wanye Morris compete for that spot. Whether they draft another, they sign another. I mean, Tyron Smith would be ideal if he can stay healthy. So maybe they are going to get a deal done with him sooner rather than later. It's only day three or four into free agency. I do agree with you. Left tackle is a need. Uh, wide receiver was possibly a bigger one. You had four-fifths of the O-line solid. Jawan Taylor on the right. Say what you want about Jawan Taylor, but he's the right tackle, and he'll probably have a better year next year after adjusting to the ref suddenly caring that he leaves the line early when he did that for four years in Jacksonville. They did not give a sh that he did that in Jacksonville. Kansas City, big problem. So he'll do better. But then you have uh, Trey Smith, Creed Humphrey, Joe Tooney, hopefully his pecs okay. Then yes, you've got to figure out the left tackle. But Donovan Smith, guys, was just a serviceable left tackle last year. He wasn't insane. And I understand it's important to protect the blind side of Patrick Mahomes. I agree with you. He's $500 million quarterback, and he's the best quarterback in the game. Protect him at all costs. But they made it work pretty well with Donovan Smith. I mean, I, I felt like it, last year was fine. Um, stressful a couple times when Donovan Smith was injured. But, yeah, overall, I thought it was okay. Um, I do agree that it is an issue. And they, you know, they need to bring in competition to compete with Wanye Morris or look at it in the draft, or sign a free agent. I do believe they are working on that. We're just fans. Me too. I'm speaking I'm speaking as one of y'all. We're just fans on the outside looking in, and we don't know what conversations have been going on. I guarantee you they've probably had conversations with left tackles, maybe even have called Tyron uh, Smith's agent. So, But I'm saying that to say this. You had the, the offensive line like pretty good, right? Four out of five. I know the blind side's important, but they're going to figure that out. Well, the wide receiver room was not good. They released MVS. Uh, McCole Hardman, free agent. I don't know if he's coming back. Richie James, free agent. I don't know if he's coming back. Tony, under contract. I don't know if he's coming back. Sky Moore, I don't know what he's going to do in year three. You had to address the wide receiver room. It was very important, in my opinion. Sean with the 10 bomb. Let's go, man. He said we could still keep Sneed, but out of pure greed. If I can get my wish list, list done, I would trade him to move up to get Brian Thomas Jr. I believe Sneed is the best in the NFL, honestly, but need offense. Yeah. Um, Nate Taylor of The Athletic. Nate Taylor of The Athletic said he still thinks that Sneed is gone. Um, there was a holdup with the Sneed trade. Like, that's not materializing as fast as I think as the Chiefs wanted it to. And I think part of the reason is, guys, is because Sneed is not getting... Teams are not offering uh, draft capital, like enough draft capital that the Chiefs thought they would be getting, I guess. Like, I think that's the issue. I'm, I'm speculating a little bit, but just looking at reports, hearing Nate Taylor, and just kind of reading around, like, I think the Chiefs thought they would get more demand from teams for Snead as far as a trade goes and what teams would be offering. And I don't think they're quite getting that, so they're kind of sitting on it and just kind of weighing their options. That was kind of putting a little bit of a pause on the wide receiver situation in theory. At least that's what people were thinking. Pretty Ricky, this two, this pretty Ricky guy that was hitting all these free agency moves before they were happening, he did say the Chiefs would get a deal done with Marquise Brown after Snead was traded. Well, they got a deal done with him, and Snead didn't get traded. I still think Snead is possibly on his way out. Um, would love to keep him if you can, but if you trade him, you get at least one draft pick. Maybe it's a third rounder. Maybe it's a second, but it might be a third. Um, and then you free up $20 million in cap space. Then you could go get your left tackle <laughs> or whatever you need. You still got other positions of need. You don't have a running back outside of Pacheco. I mean, you got P. Ryan and Daneric Prince on the practice squad, but you need more than that. Um, you've, you've got other holes you need to fill. They have been filling their defensive line room. They've been filling the defensive line. Uh, they signed Derek Nottie and Turk Wharton today to deals. 
And then uh, they've got, I feel like they just made another move on the D-line. Well, they had Chris Jones. Obviously, that was the biggest move in free agency. Um, but yeah, they're slowly putting the pieces together. Marquise Brown was the newest addition. Love that one. Again, if you haven't seen my video on Marquise Brown that I dropped earlier, go check it out. I go about it as in-depth as I'm able to go in an eight-minute video. Definitely had fun with that one. Uh, American 10, 20, back with another 20 bomb. Now, go get Adonai Mitchell or uh, Troy Franklin in the draft and a great offensive tackle, please. Veach, let's freaking go. Hey, dude, if they want to go get Mr. Alt, mortgage the farm, sell it off, and go get their franchise left tackle, let's freaking go. I don't think they're going to be able to do that, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the left tackle situation. They will draft a wide receiver. Question is when? Will it be round one, round two? I, I just not sure yet. Um, I will say this, Hollywood Brown doesn't completely solve your wide receiver room issues. You, you still need to add in the draft and probably add another free agent, even if it's a, a vet men guy. Remember, they brought Richie James in for like a million bucks last year. Um, maybe you could bring McColl back on a cheap deal. I, I don't know. I'm not even saying you need McColl now that you have Marquise Brown, um, but you, you're going to need another body in there. Uh, somebody that raises the floor of the room. Marquise Brown, he's your third option outside of Kelsey and Rice, like, I love that. He could even be, yeah, he could be right up there with Rice at times, depending on the play call. Like, they're different bodied guys and how you can use them. So um, I'm excited about that one. But, yeah, I'll be curious to see what else they're going to be doing. We'll be keeping eyes on that every step of the way. You already know. Juan with a 20. So right now, what are you expecting from the draft? That's funny. I kind of I kind of talked about it. We need to see how free agency plays out a little bit more, but you've got to look at tackle You've got to look at wide receiver. You, there's a running back need, I believe, in my opinion, as well. That You'll probably maybe draft a running back. Could be late. Um, if Snead's gone, maybe they take another shot at a defensive back. If, you know, if they trade Snead, maybe you even take whatever draft pick you get out of Snead and you draft a defensive back with that. I'm not sure. Um, those are a few needs right now that the Chiefs are going to need to look into, and it just kind of depends on how their board falls. So... Appreciate that, man. Andy with the five. Not going to lie, I was throwing a fit today when Curtis Samuel and A.J. Dillon came off the board, but I'm good now, LOL. Still need a, a running back to assist pop. Yeah, I just uh, mentioned that, but I agree. Um, you still need to look at the running back room. I, I think they would be well off signing a veteran, but maybe they believe Le, uh, LaMichael Pirine could be that veteran guy. He's like 27, 28 years old. He's been in the league for a while. He's been in the system now for a year or a year-ish. I think he signed last offseason. Can't remember if he was signed to the practice squad during the season or it was in the off season. But Lamichael Pirine's been there. I don't know if he's not Jet McKinnon. He's not Jarek McKinnon by any means. But I don't know if McKinnon's coming back. He's 31, I think, about to be 32, somewhere right around in there, and just had another surgery. Not sure if the Chiefs opt to bring McKinnon back, even though he was freaking fantastic third down back. Man, he was he was phenomenal. Zach with the 20 bomb. Let's go, dude. Finally. We got a veteran wide receiver. If everything goes well with Hollywood Brown this season, I would love for Veach to sign him to a couple more years or so if they're able to make it work. If not, then let's get him a ring. No, exactly. And I think that's the pitch. Brett Veach and company says, hey, man, right now, you know, this is what we can do. But look what Juju did. He came here on a one-year deal. He then signed a three-year deal for almost $30 million with the Patriots. If we can work something out with you and it works out, we'd love to have you back in the future. Like, that's probably a good pitch. And it helps that, uh, yo, Hollywood Brown just responded back to me on Twitter. Let's go, dude. Let's go. And I'm going to tell him as soon as you get to KC, get some barbecue. Let's go, man. That's freaking sick. I just checked my DMs and I was like, Hollywood Brown? Let's go. Um, you see his Twitch stream? I did not because I was making uh, I was making that video and then getting ready for this live stream. But I heard he was playing Red Kingdom. He was playing Taylor Swift. <laughs> so. So I did ask Twitter if the Chiefs could still keep Sneed. And a lot of people in the comments are saying, yes, please. I hope so. Maybe somebody DM'd me and said I don't think it's a I don't think it's an option. I think he's going to get traded. So, we'll see. I would love to still keep Sneed, man. I'd still love to keep Sneed if we can. What is our salary? Well, 
You had about $15 million in cap space a couple days ago, but then they signed uh, Turk Wharton to a one-year $2.75 million deal. Then they signed Derek Naughty to a one-year deal as well today. I don't know the detail. I don't know the numbers on Naughty's deal. So you got to take that $15.5 million that the Chiefs had, subtract those two contracts in theory if they make the top 51, and then um, whatever Hollywood Browns is, let's say his cap hit this year, we don't know yet. Uh, let's say this cap hit is seven million, six million. Like I, I don't know what it's going to be because you could you could do some signing bonuses. It, maybe it's only going to be a few million dollars. Like they can, we'll have to just wait and see. I'm not a contract expert, but it's a one year deal worth up to eleven million. Uh, his base salary could be, you know, six seven million, but they could do some conversions on like a signing bonus and make the cap hit lower. So uh, they've got. Eight ten million dollars probably left right now. That's a rough estimate. We'll probably find more details out tomorrow about that. Super uh, super stoked though, man, to get him. Super stoked. Did Creed play with Hollywood in college? Um, I th I think their years crossed over. Uh, Hollywood transferred there in two thousand and seventeen, two thousand and eighteen. That's the University of Oklahoma. And then he was drafted in 2019. Creed Humphrey college years. He played there from 2017 to 2020. So they had to have a couple years of crossover there. Yeah. I think they did play together. It adds up. Travis the Goat with the five. Let's go, dude. Hey, Cole, I think we should trade Snead for another receiver and draft a good corner. Um, I don't know if a receiver will get packaged into this. Maybe. I mean, they were they were into the Deontay Johnson. I think that's who it was. Trade with uh, the Steelers, and they ended up getting a cornerback out of it. Um, but the Steelers didn't want to trade him in the, within the conference. I'm not saying it's impossible that the Chiefs can't trade Snead and package that for a receiver, but since they have Hollywood Brown, I think the need is a little bit less there, and you might just opt to grab whatever draft capital you can out of Snead and then just go and and use that pick for whatever what wherever your board falls at that time. I'm sure they'll draft a DB at some point. They did draft Nick Jones last year though. They have Chamari Connor who can move all around. He's a safety, but dude, he's played like I think Dave Merritt said uh in the secondary, Chamari Connor his rookie year played five positions back there. And he said a rookie has never done that. He's the most cerebral rookie he's ever coached. So we have I mean just Bright spot there for Chamari Connor. I'm super excited about that. Yo, what the heck? American 1020 is back with another 20 bomb. Now, if we got Hollywood, he'll torch the backfield. Rice will be your yak yards guy. Then we get a big body receiver in the draft. What you think? I'll be curious to see what the Chiefs want to do with uh, the receiver that they draft. Because remember, Hollywood's on a one-year deal, right? So you've got to you have to draft. Also thinking about the next four to five years. If they draft a wide receiver round one, they get that fifth year option. They could draft another small speedy guy, you know, and there's your marquees. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not comparing immediately a rookie to a vet. That's no disrespect to Marquise Brown by any means, but I'm just saying like they could look into that with Marquise only being on a one year deal and say, okay, well, we don't know what the future is going to look like there. I mean, because when they get to the draft, Marquise is probably going to do some OTAs by then. Maybe if the OTAs if the OTAs start by then, they're not going to get really any field time with them. So they'll go into the draft just looking at the future too, like that not just this year, the next few years. Um, but we'll definitely see, man. I'm excited for Marquise Brown, man. Um, for him to be able to bounce back in KC after everything that's just gone on in Arizona. Super stoked for him, man. And, uh, yeah, I'll be curious to see what the Chiefs do. But he will be able to stretch the field, but uh, they want to expand Rice's role as, as well next year, so I'm excited to see what that could look like also. Adonai Mitchell, is that what you're saying? Yeah, a lot of people have been talking about him. Mm-hmm. They can't stop Kelsey over the middle, Rice across the field, and Hollywood over the top. No, sir, Pokey. You already know. That's the plan. Austin, let's go, dude. Appreciate the membership. Give me McConkey, Worthy, 
poke or pierce yeah that's a lot of options is this still live yeah it's still live i didn't go live till 11. keon coleman is the big man we need hey you a lot of you guys are you're further up on the draft than i am yeah you're gonna be able to talk more draft stuff than me but i am getting into it uh this month we're starting to go Starting to go down the rabbit hole of the draft. And I've said this before. It's just hard for me. Like, um, there's, you know, however, a couple hundred people in the draft and the Chiefs could get five. <laughs> so it's really hard to, like, spend a lot of my time going down the rabbit hole of all these guys. But by the time the draft gets here and even, like, a few weeks before the draft, first couple rounds will be pretty, will be, will be dangerously fluent in draft talk. Um, dangerously fluent not an expert that's not that's not who i am i'm just a fan like you guys aj ball said are you full-time i don't even know what that means do i do youtube full-time uh yes sir I'll, i just run this channel and uh stay in my basement reporting on my favorite team man yes sir hollywood carlos let's go you already know uh frank gore what are we talking about Brand with the five said, I am elated. I am nervous. Last year we hyped up the room with so much potential. I hope the projection of what it of what this means comes true or better. Yeah, and then, you know, it's not just one person makes or breaks it. You've got a there's other factors you can't you can't uh you can't uh see coming, basically, like injuries and stuff like that. So you've gotta just do as well as you can in free agency, hit the draft, train these guys up and then have as good a depth as possible. The Chiefs know that. That's why the Chiefs are, are as dominant as they have been. They've got depth when people go down. Think of Drew Tranquil signing last year. Nick Bolton went down half the season. Drew Tranquil stepped right in. And freaking Mike Linebacker, dude, blue dot, green dot, whatever the freaking color is. <laughs> I forgot the color. Green dot, I think. Um, one of the dots, but he was able to... Uh, he was able to just call the defense without skipping a beat. That was a free agency signing last year, one-year deal. Mike Edwards, nice pickup too. Like, depth is super important. Brian Cook went out for the season. So, yeah, depth is super important. Uh, who do you think our running backs are next season? Uh, that's a great question. Definitely Pacheco. You got LaMichael P. Ryan and, and Daneric Prince, and then you probably got a... Maybe you go get a vet in free agency. Maybe you draft one late, too. Yep. Your guess is as good as mine right now. I will say the running back market went crazy this free agency. Man, everybody was getting signed. Joe Mixon just got traded. He got extended for three years as well. I, I don't know if you guys saw that today, but Eckler's gone. He's signed. Uh, Saquon's an eagle. Tony Pollard signed elsewhere. Like, so many, man. Yep. No Marxist said... Uh, A.D. Mitchell, yep. 6'2", 205, 4'3", speed, runs good routes, great body control, snags, contested catches. Him or Ladd uh, would be good at 32. Not worthy. We don't need another small gadget wide receiver. Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, Chiefs will make that call, but if they don't want to go for with another small gadgety wide receiver, they like to do that. They really like to do that, okay? So um, I have liked what I've seen from Adonai. I've liked what I've seen from uh, Ladd McConkie as well. And I don't know, man. I'm a little partial to Lad just because there's not a lot of Irish receivers, okay? I am Irish, if you can't tell. Okay, my mom's my mom's last name is McCormick. Uh, she's we got family from Ireland, so I just I'm a little partial to an Irish wide receiver. But Adonai is a dog, so I'm fine with whatever they want to roll with. And for all we know, they don't even go with a round one receiver. They grab a tackle or something. But we'll definitely have to see, man. I'm I'm excited and intrigued by it. Great cooking spices McCormick makes. Oh, that's facts. That's the best seasoning out there. Dude, if if I somehow find out I'm related to that family, like, dog, y'all are coming with me. I'm buying season tickets for everybody because we got money money. <laughs> What's the new? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me see this. Andy with the two. I'd love to see Osborne and Madison uh, cook or acres. Yeah, we're talking. Uh, well, some of those are running backs. Maybe all of them are. But KJ Osborne? 
Unless there, I'm thinking, unless there's a different Osborne, that's a wide receiver, right? Or am I tripping? AJ Osborne? Yeah, he's a wide receiver. So I, it must be a different Osborne. Unless you're talking about an additional wide receiver. Um, Dalvin Cook would be interesting. Dude, Dalvin Cook would actually be pretty interesting to me. It, based on like the Chiefs offense. I know he's not who he once was. But that's still pretty intriguing. Austin Myers with the five. Said, what's the news on Mike Williams? Has he been signed? I haven't heard anything about being official. Uh, I haven't seen him signed anywhere. Keen, the news that you did probably see was Keenan Allen got traded to the Bears. Bro, the Chargers came to Keenan Allen. They came to Keenan Allen and said, can you take a pay cut? He said no. They said okay and traded him to the Bears. Keenan Allen has been on the Chargers for 11 years and just like that, traded to the Bears. So Mike Williams gets released yesterday, I think it was. Keenan Allen gets traded to the Bears. 24 hours, they lose Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. That's freaking crazy. So there's rumors on teams that could be signing uh, Mike Williams. I haven't seen anything confirmed. Somebody did tell me, though, that Pretty Ricky said he could be signing somewhere for about $8 million a year. Yeah, this is the guy who's been breaking all these free agency reports. Jets are interested in adding Mike Williams in the $8 million per year range. So, could be a Jet. But that's, that. there's nothing confirmed. Nothing confirmed. American 1020 is back with another 20 bomb. You are going insane, my guy. Appreciate you. Poll, please. Which big body draft receiver should we draft? Keon Coleman, Troy Franklin, A.D. Mitchell, Brian Thomas Jr. uh, Within reach for first rounder. All right. I'm going to need y'all. I'm going to need y'all's draft help. I'm going to say which big body wide receiver for... Uh, round one, if available. All right. I'm go- I'm I'm writing them down. I'm writing them down. I need y'all to vote, and we'll, we'll keep answering questions and hanging out with you guys while while we vote. Troy Franklin. Okay, we got that. We got that. We got Ad Mitchell. I know. I know people like call him Ad Mitchell, but dude, I just like Adonai. It's such a fire name. I'm going to say his full name every time, probably. Okay, and then Brian Thomas Jr. I think the Chiefs would have to get, like, trade up for Brian Thomas Jr., right? I don't think he's going to fall. But anyway, vote. Let me know. We need the smart draft people to let me know. Yo, what's up, B-Easy? How the heck are you, man? Veach sadly won't draft wide receiver in the first round going OT or DT. I wouldn't even be mad. Rasp, I wouldn't be mad if he gets an OT. Uh, wouldn't even be mad if he gets a DT, you know, um, they brought back Turk Wharton and Nadia on one year deals. They've got Chris Jones, but you need to take some more swings. They did trade for Neil Farrell last year, the, the Raider. Um, he kind of red shirted. He just came, he just got traded for like right before the season started. Uh, they have Isaiah Bugs. They have Mike Pinnell. Like they've got some guys, but a, a couple of those guys are older. Neil Farrell is not. They did try, um, Ke- I was at Keandre Coburn last year, the sixth round pick, and he didn't work out. He moved on, um, signed with another team by now, I believe. But they have been trying. So I wouldn't be surprised if they try again with the with the D-line somewhere. Probably not edge. They did back-to-back edge rushers um, two years in a row. George, I almost said George Coleman, dude. That's how you know it's getting late. George Karloftis. We have a George for. I don't know why I said George Coleman, but I was thinking George Foreman. We have a George Foreman girl upstairs. George Karloff this, and then the year after was Felix and UDK Uzama. Probably not going edge, I wouldn't think. So interior um, or tackle, offensive tackle. Austin with a 20. No hate from this. It's all good, man. But I was a former Chargers fan until I decided to be a fan for the Chiefs. Oh, it's all good, dude. Was fan for the Chargers for 20 years. Within those 20 years, middle of the season was my breaking point for the organization. Hey, dude, welcome aboard. Because if I was a Chargers fan, I would be losing my mind. Also, 
With you leaving and coming to the Chiefs, they now only have four fans instead of five. That's actually crazy. I'm, all jokes aside, they they have they have I feel like one of the most talented rosters, at least over the last couple of years. Like they had they were kind of stacked with talent, and they just it was injury bug, but coaching issues. Like uh, Staley should have been gone a long time ago. Dude, I looked at his coaching career, Brandon Staley. I won't go down a huge rant with this, but. He climbed up to head coach like super fast. I don't even know how he got head coach as fast as he did. Um, I don't blame you, man. Welcome to the kingdom, baby. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Appreciate the 20 bomb and the kind words. It's been a fun battle. I mean, dude, Philip Rivers, I used to get pissed off at that guy back in the day. So it's been, it's been fun playing against them, you know, every single year, twice a year. But yeah, last season was rough, dude. And I like Herbert, too. Christopher Mugford with the two Brett Veach at work again. How awesome. Yeah, man. When people on Twitter and on social are like, Brett Veach, Brett Veach, hello, hello. They're definitely doing stuff, but it takes two to tango. You can make calls, but it takes two to tango. I just jokingly shared, uh, I jokingly shared this gif that if the Chiefs kept who they have now, this is what Mahomes would be doing next season. I'm obviously, I was trolling. And just like kind of being funny or trying to be funny. This is what Mahomes would have had to been doing. <laughs> I've had to play a couple times. He's going to have to throw his own pass and catch it himself. Oh, man. I think Jamal Charles did that back in the day. Trent Green is back. Let's go, dude. There are reports now on Sneed playing on his tag. He also dropped a cryptic tweet after the news. How do we feel about it, Cole? Yeah, I did see. So I did see what what Sneed said. But I ain't going to lie. What the freak does this mean? What emoji? Hey, get off. What emoji is this? <laughs> what is that? I didn't know I was going to full screen it like that. Like, what does that mean? What is this? Somebody explain it. If you could tell me what this emoji means, we're breaking it down, dude. We are deciphering Sneed's tweet. Yeah, Jody said, explain this to me like I'm five. He's, but he's patiently waiting. He wants a long-term deal. You're an eagle, big bro. Give me a break. Give me a break. Yeah, if you guys let me know in the chat what the heck that means. Sleeping on him. It's the thinking emoji. It's bowing. It's bowing, please. Like, please, please. Okay, bow, bow, waiting. All right. I don't know what that means. But somebody asked me, and uh, who was it? Trent. Trent Green, the legend, asked me. Yeah, I mean, Sneed could play on his tag. Um, it is a possibility. I say with each passing day, a trade doesn't happen. It does go up a little bit, percentage-wise, that Sneed could stay and either play on his tag or get a, a deal done with the Chiefs. If they get a deal done with the Chiefs, it really can't be longer than two to three years. And if it is three years, you need an out after two, probably, because the Chiefs also most likely want to keep around Trent McDuffie, and you, you're going to have to pay that man in a couple years. So it's a bit tough. Whoa. Somebody must be listening. <laughs> Amber, are you listening to my stream right now? Okay. Okay, we got the answer. I just got a DM on Twitter, and we got the answer. Look at this. We're, we're really breaking this down. It's the person bowing emoji. Whoa, where did my camera go? I disappeared. It can be used to express gratitude, respect, or apology. It can also be used to show humility or to express a deep bow of appreciation. Well, there you go. It's contemplative in some capacity. Yeah, thank you. Let's freaking go. That's it. He, he, so he could stay. I still think a trade is likely. Um, they've got really till the draft. They're, they don't necessarily have to be in a hurry, per se, unless they need to sign some more free agents. Um, then obviously they can. 
So we'll definitely see. I would love for him to stay. I just, you know, you can't make it work with everybody. Dub Freak with the five gifted. Let's go, dude. Brand with the uh, five bomb as well. Get rid of the top three offensive weapons, but forced the top two defensive players to restructure for cap reasons. Chargers will win the West. Media. <laughs> dude. Uh, I don't know what's going on over there with the Chargers, man. Yeah, they had uh, Khalil Mack restructure, right? And then did they have Bosa restructure as well? Is that what happened? And then they got rid of uh, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen. They are in full reboot mode. Reboot mode. I mean, no doubt about it. Kyle with the 10. Let's go, dude. Johnny Wilson is a decent route runner. Has hands. Is an absolute dog and a mismatch at 6-7. Holy smokes. Am I dreaming? Or should... Uh, the old Chiefs possibly overdraft this mismatch at wide receiver. I don't know. I don't know much about Johnny Wilson, actually. I'll have to look into him. That's your first super on a stream, though, Kyle. Dude with the 10 bomb. Thank you, man. What do you guys think about Johnny Wilson? Let me check this other poll, too. Oh, we've got Keon Coleman at 32% and AD Mitchell at 39. Adonai is leading the charge right now. And that's, a, that's 330 votes, too. What do you guys think about Johnny Wilson in chat? Anybody anybody got something? Johnny Wilson would be great to add in the third round. Yeah, they lost Mike Williams as well. Yep. Oh, you're saying the Chiefs should bring in Mike Williams as well? I mean, if you could somehow try to afford it, that would be fun. Cole with the midnight stream? Dude, we, we burn in the late night candle or whatever the saying is that I, I once they signed why are the Chiefs doing all these late night signings dude the Chris Jones signing was like 10 p.m. it was so freaking late I need to make a short we'll have to do that in the morning a Hollywood Brown short switch Wilson to play tight end there you go yeah midnight oil thanks dude what I say I said the midnight candle <laughs> I don't, dude I don't know my bad Kyle, thanks again for the 10. Dub Freak with the 20. Let's freaking go, man. Let's go, Cole. The signing opens up our draft. Yeah, we can go OT or wide receiver in the first round. Then OG or DT in the third. Then every other pick is a luxury. How about those Chiefs? Yeah, um, guard is a, a sneaky need for the Chiefs. They lost Nick Allegretti. And think about it. They drafted um, Darian Kennard. He's with the freaking Eagles now, I think. He's gone. Um... Joe Tooney only has so many years left. And then Trey Smith, he's on the last year of his deal? Or he's got one left after this? What? Where are we at with Trey Smith? I think he was 2021, right? But I'm saying all that to say, like, you're going you're gonna to need guards. Yeah, he's on the last year of his deal. Dude, he becomes a free agent in 2025. Yeah, offensive guard is a pretty, like, you've got to pay attention to that in the draft. Yeah, he was drafted the same year as Creed. I just, all the years kind of blend together, man. And I can't remember sometimes what exact year uh, some of these guys get drafted. But it was 21, which I thought, but I guess I can't do math. I'm thinking 20 to 24 is four years, but you got to count 2020. So that's actually five. Math is not my not my strong suit. Jonathan Glenn with the two. Cole, I'm drunk right now. I'm on one. Yeah. <laughs> Are you celebrating the wide receiver signing, or is there another reason? Let's go, dude. Appreciate you. Thanks for the two bomb. Andy with the two said, Wilson is another FSU guy like Coleman. 6'7", 240 plus. That's a big, big man. Holy smokes. What? The fact that we have a thousand people in, our, in here right now is crazy. In a good way. Like, y'all are some vampires, dude. Or, or you're all hyped up on Mountain Dew like I am about this signing. Uh, Chiefs wide receiver signing is like Christmas morning. Dude, I got so stoked, man. Chiefs got Hollywood. Bears got Keenan. Are you happy about... Are you also a Bears fan, Jonathan? Or are you just happy that the Chargers no longer have Keenan Allen? <laughs> Either way, crazy, dude. Crazy, man. Yeah, I was super... I was super uh, excited about the news, man. I, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. I prepped a video for it. Like, I had the title. I had the thumbnail. I had everything ready. 
Yep, I had everything ready. I was like, let's go, dude. Austin with the 10, I appreciate your kind words, but I also appreciate your hard work to keep us all up to date on the social medias. Let's go, dude. Appreciate that, dude. It's a lot of fun. I mean, this is the team I grew up watching and cheering on. So it is just fun to me, you know, to follow the team. I've obviously, since running the YouTube channel, I think I, I never thought I would follow the Chiefs as heavily as I do, just in the sense of like, I wake up and consume Chiefs content all day. <laughs> do I go to bed? It's fun. Um, but just, you know, typically before this, I was a videographer, a photographer. I was working weddings, doing video shoots. Like I couldn't always, couldn't always lock in and focus like I can now. Um, so never knew I'd be able to, to this degree. And I, I just count it as a blessing. Like every single day when I wake up, like, man, I get to do this and it is a privilege. It's a lot of fun. I want the guy from FSU, Xavier Worthy is overrated. I don't know if they get worthy or not. I, it's pretty split, like, depending on who you ask. A lot of people like him because of his speed. Um, they do say, like, he's got other traits with, of his route running and stuff, but I've heard a lot of good talk about Adonai Mitchell as well. Probably more so. Like, if the Chiefs could get him, that would be fantastic. Oh, Jonathan Glenn with the two. Happy Keenan out this mofo. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Austin, hey, you're always welcome in Chiefs Kingdom, man. Thanks again for the kind words. Jonathan Glenn, let's freaking go. Big B from AZ with the two bomb said, Pat doesn't have a left tackle yet. Who can we get? I talked about that a little bit earlier. I mean, there's Tyron Smith. He's a good one. Uh, Donovan Smith is still an option. You're really just looking at short-term veteran placeholders uh, for the left tackle position. And then can they get another tackle in the draft? There still is Wanye Morris. Some people say, well, don't forget about Wanye. Like, don't disrespect him. Well, I'm not disrespecting him. But you can't just say right now, Wanye Morris is the starting left tackle and not bring somebody in to compete with him. He's got nobody to compete with him. And he played a handful of games last year, his rookie year at left tackle, and, like, did okay. He had some stuff he needs to work on. But you need to bring in some competition, whether it's a veteran whether it's draft another offensive tackle early or do both. Um, I agree that that is probably the next area you really need to look at. Alexander with the five. What up, dude? Thank you, man. Hey, Cole, what wideout do you think will help us in our scheme in this draft? Um, I mean, we've talked about a few, and I'll probably do a video on that subject here soon, like the top five to ten draft prospects the Chiefs should look at in the at a couple different position groups and we'll look at the wide receiver room but it just kind of depends on wh what uh, what else the Chiefs land as far as free agents go before the draft or who else I guess would be the, the proper phrasing and then who they have on their board like it has either like a true round one or round two grade and it, and it falls to them what pick do they get for Legereus Sneed if they trade him by the way as well do they get a second rounder for Sneed do they have an extra second? Do they have an extra third? Do they package a couple of those? Do they move up a little bit? Um, that kind of just depends because they don't like to reach for players. They will go up and get them at times, but if they have a true round one grade like Trent McDuffie, they'll go get him. They went and got him. Uh, they had Tyreek Hill picks to be able to do that, but um, your guess right now is as good as mine just for what receiver they'll pick based on what would help best with their scheme because like, there's a couple different guys in there that I'm like, dude, Adnai could fit. Adnai could definitely fit. Like Andy Reid's great at taking the strengths of people they bring in and uh, utilizing them for the scheme. Like he's very good at doing that. Xavier Worthy. That's why, I mean, could see him working too. Gadget guy behind the line of scrimmage, run quick routes. Like I, I get it and I see it, but I understand that there's other concerns there about his size and they don't. Some people don't think that's the, you're even your best option at 32. Like Lad McConkey could be cool. Um, he's still pretty quick as well. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be curious, man. Definitely going to be curious to see what uh, direction they end up going. You think the Chargers are going to go for Justin Jefferson? I don't know, dude. I freaking hope not. I would rather not see Justin Jefferson in the division. Um, can't rule anything out for the Chargers right now. They're in full rebuild, full rebuild mode, and but they have their quarterback. So they could go big swing. They could go big swing for a wide receiver. They don't really got anybody, dude. Who they got? Quentin Johnston? Who else they got over there? They got their returner. 
can't remember the returner's name, but he's very good. Yeah, they got rid of everybody else. Ooh, if the Chargers go for Justin Jefferson, oh no, thank you. Chaps with a two bomb. Pat doesn't have a left tackle yet. Who can we get? Yeah, I think I answered that. Oh, I just must have missed that. I must have missed the Jefferson one, but I got it. Austin with the membership. Let's go. Kyle with the five. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, dude. Austin with the five again. Dude, let's go. Dream scenario. KC trades the Vikings for Justin Jefferson. Yeah, that's probably not happening. If they make a trade at this point, somehow like big swing, I think it's for like a left tackle. I don't see what other position you really take a huge swing like that for to pay pretty decent size money to because it's as much as we would like that with Justin Jefferson, he's going to demand an, a, a contract extension of thirty-two plus million dollars per year. That is a dream scenario, though. I, I mean, pinch me. I'm dreaming. If we had Justin Jefferson, that would be crazy. Austin Scott with the five. This kind of feels like the uh, moment. Patriots signed Randy Moss in the middle of their dynasty. It changed their offense, dude. I mean, I think Randy Moss is one of the greatest to ever play the game. But if you're specifically talking about Hollywood Brown coming and and maybe helping bring a refresh and a great way to the wide receiver room, like I'm all in for it. Let's go, dude. You know, Andy Reid and is going to do his thing with them. I'm excited about it. 100%. Caleb with the five. Hollywood. You already know. Dub Freak with the 10. Talking about staying up late. It's nearly 5 a.m. here in the UK. Day off work tomorrow, but can't sleep with Chiefs news going wild in free agency plus about the draft. Reckon you might collab with the RGR boys. Yeah. Um, we'll probably collab with a couple different people for the draft. I'll link, if they're willing, with somebody again from KCSN, somebody from RGR. Um, and then there's a couple other guys I linked with last year. And I I might even link with Bengal. He's got a pretty big YouTube channel, but is like a draft wizard. So maybe even Brett Coleman. There's a few different people I could link with, and I'd love to do like quick interviews with them to ask them about who they think would be good fits for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I did it last year. We'll definitely do it again because you guys know like the draft is not my strength. So I do not mind bringing in people that study it way more than I do, um, even though I'm, I'm starting to ramp that up. But these there's guys that have been studying this year's draft for since football season started. And I don't watch college ball. So that's where I'm really behind the curve. So, yeah, we'll definitely be bringing some people in 100 percent, man. 100 percent. Thanks again for the 10 bomb. All the generosity. It's five. Dude, you are up late, man. You are the vampire. So are we three-peating? I mean, I hope so, that one. I hope so, that one, Dabber. Nice. Bears fans must be so happy right now. Uh, dude, the Bears are in an interesting spot. They've got a, some, a lot of draft picks. I, they either have the number one or number two pick this year, right? It's top three for sure. I think they might get their quarterback. You're surrounding them with weapons. Like, yeah, man. Lights, camera, action. Exactly, Randy. Exactly. Would you be interested in a cheap one-year deal from a Cole Hardman? Yeah, Rasp, I, <laughs> Raspberry. Yeah, I think I think I would. I've said it before. Like, if Kadarius Tony goes, I kind of I wouldn't mind a McCole Hardman. Now, since they have Marquise Brown, do you think they should go for somebody else? Maybe a slightly different style, because McCole Hardman is also a smaller-bodied guy with speed, not as quick as Marquise. So I'm like, do you kind of want to go a different direction now? Um, so. I'd be curious to see what the Chiefs end up doing, but I wouldn't mind it. And some people are like, why would you ever want McColl back? Well, I just think he he's good at his role. Like, he's fine for a wide receiver four, somewhere around there, and then the punt and kick returner. Like, bring him back as a returner, and he knows the offense inside and out. Like, he can contribute. Don't let him be your top, you know, your top target every game or anything crazy like that, but he's shown he can have five, 600-yard seasons and and contribute, so, like, that's fine with me, personally. Is McColl getting into trouble this year for tampering? I don't know, Caleb. I have heard no official word that the league was looking into it. Yeah, I've heard no official word that the league was looking into it. But yeah, you're talking about that podcast where it sounded like he might have been tampering. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I haven't heard anything at all. Yeah, there's no real proof on it yet. No, exactly. 100%. McColl was just yapping. 
Yeah, I think he was. I think he was just kind of, he kind of dramatized the story a little bit. And he really could have just told Brett Veach and Patrick Mahomes, like, on the field when the Jets and Chiefs played, like, pregame or postgame, like, hey, man, y'all need a receiver, you know? I'm just sitting on the bench, you know what I mean? Like, it could have just been like that. And that's all, that's all it could have been. So he really could have said, I told Pat and Veach to come get me. That's not tampering, though. Like, it's just not. American 1020 with the five. Let's go, dude. Wide receiver Brandon Rice or Luke McCaffrey. Yeah, I know that's uh, Christian McCaffrey's brother. A later draft. Imagine Rice times two on our team. I don't know much about Brandon Rice, <laughs> but I have watched some film on Luke McCaffrey, and I'm just like, holy smokes, dude. I was like... That that is one athletic family. It's one athletic family. But dude, rice rice baby? Times two? What receivers do you think are cut and gone next year? You mean like for the 2025 season? Or are you talking about that don't make the 53 man roster and play this season? Those are two kind of different questions. Yeah, Coleman would be the next TO. Arturio Green Beckham? You think so? I mean, all right now. All right now, you're sold on Keon Coleman. There's a lot of people speaking highly of him. Yeah, Brandon Rice's, Jerry Rice's son got great hands and uber physical. Actually, okay, so I do, I did know that, even though I, I said I don't know much about him, because we talked about it on stream once, and we looked it up, and uh, Jerry Rice was like, I think it was Jerry Rice was was critiquing his son's combine stuff <laughs> or pro day stuff. One of the two. Pretty sure. I'm almost positive. We, But that was like a late night stream. Dude, it is midnight. The frick. We did go live at 11. Are we going to release Tony? I mean, possibly, Derek. The thing is, like, if you release Kadarius Tony... It's a $2.5 million cap hit this year, and all of it's dead cap. You don't get any savings by cutting him. So maybe you try to trade him, but I don't know who would want to trade for him. Um, so you either just keep him on and hope he contributes in some way, shape, or form this year, or you just cut ties and eat the $2.5 million, which they very well could do. Yeah, which they very well could do. Are we keeping Richie James? I don't know. He's a free agent, Nate. So maybe not. It's hard to know if he's coming back. He was fine as a returner. Um, but if you if you were giving me the choice of returner of him or McColl Hardman, I'd probably say McColl. You know, but he did a good job. Y'all gotta relax on Tony. I mean, I'm not freaking out about Tony. I'm just saying what the options are. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are speculating, even insiders. Beat reporters that cover KC that are speculating Tony is probably gone. Um, we'll see. The ch you know, if anybody's if anybody's great at giving second chances, it's Andy Reid. So he very well may keep him around, and and um, we'll just have to wait and see. He was he didn't play the last eight games of the season, dude. So I don't know if it matters if he's here or not. Justin Fields is a backup. We'll take it. Yeah, we have Nico Ramihio as well. Clueless. Yeah, we got we got some guys. I mean. You got Nico Remigio, you got Justin Ross, uh, you got Anthony, so Anthony Miller, Shy Smith, uh, Cornell Powell. I mean, you got some other guys. After the Hollywood signing, uh, what is the C Sneed situation looking like? Ask Sam. I don't know. Um, still potential trade incoming. I don't know if if the Chiefs are getting offered as much as they thought they would. Like, I don't know if his market is as hot as they thought it would be as far as what teams are actually offering draft capital wise. So it seems like it's slowed down a little bit. I, from what I understand, it's still most likely that he's going to get traded, but the, you know, there are chances that Sneed stays and plays in Kansas city. That's where he wants to be. He's made it clear. He's not a diva, he's not a drama guy. Like he just puts his head down and grinds like chiefs love him. If they can make it work, maybe, there's still a, an outside possibility he stays, but I still think as of right now, um, the trade is most likely what's going to happen still. Yeah, I wish we could keep Snead too, Knight. I mean, it's not a, it's not impossible, but it's 
you know, an outside chance, I think, at the moment. Do the Chiefs have a, a need for a QB2? Yeah, they do. Um, because Blaine Gabbert's a free agent. But you got Ryan Tannehill out there. You got I mean, some people thought this was a dumb idea, but I was like, what if you bring Shane Buchel back to compete for the QB2 job? Because he's not gonna make that spot in Buffalo. So I'm saying bring in a couple guys to really compete for QB2. If they want to bring Blaine Gabbert back again, it's fine. I think he's got a year under his belt in the system, and it would make sense. I would be fine with it. But there are there are some other options. Yeah, Sean said, honestly, I'd rather bring back Gabbert. I mean, I thought, personally, watching preseason last year, Gabbert was the clear QB2 over Buchel. I mean, Buchel been in the system for a few years, so he looked a little bit more comfortable, I guess. But the stuff I was seeing from Gabbert, I was like, yeah. I was like, that's that's QB2. Jimmy G backup? I mean, okay. Come on now. Come on over, Jimmy G. Join the winning team. Would the NFL let Justin Jefferson go to the Chiefs? I mean, yeah. But the Chiefs would have to give up a plethora of draft picks to get him and then extend him for a, a, a huge deal of $32, $33 million a year. Cam Newton for backup? I'm down. I would actually be down. I know some people don't like him and they say, well, he would take up too much attention from the media, but I'd be down. Jimmy G is cursed. Yeah. I don't know about that. At least we didn't trade for backup. Jaguars. I mean, dude, they got uh, Mac Jones. That's a, for a backup. Like that's okay. If you need him to come in and play a couple of games, that's okay. Gabbert's not the answer for number two. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's somebody else, but I'm just saying, like, if you need somebody and you're there's not a lot of strong options that stand out, like bringing Gabbert back with a year under his belt, he'd only be a, a bit better, in my opinion, being more comfortable. Um, but maybe they're not high enough on that, and it's totally fine. You know, Maybe they're not high enough on that, and um, they want to go a different direction. I'm totally cool with that. Bring back Nick Foles? Let's go. I'm down. What about a Hollywood Brown sticker? We probably need to get one, huh? We need to get like a Hollywood Hollywood emoji or something. Sneed causing that fumble on the goal line was one of the best defensive plays of the years. Oh, dude, 100% night. 100% Nighthawk. What kind of contract does Kelsey have? Well, he's got two more years. He's got two more years left on his contract, if that helps you. How many more rings does Mahomes need to... To win to catch MVS? MVS in the GOAT combo. All right, Bonds. All right, Bonds. What up, dude? <laughs> Once I saw your name, I was like, oh, yeah, he trolling. Oh, yeah. Falcons are making it to the playoffs next year. Hey, the Falcons made some moves, man. They got Kirk Thuggins. They got... Uh, who'd they just get? They got a wide receiver. Was it Darnell Mooney? They got a wide receiver. I don't remember who it was. It might be Mooney. But they made some more moves than that, too. Trade Sneed to my Colts. Hey, Dante, it, he could be a Colt. I know they're in the running for it. MVS is not coming back. Yeah, he's not coming back. The Chiefs released him. Yeah, he gone. Hey, this is pretty cool. Pretty Ricky. He said... Uh, he said, I have Chiefs fans in my DMs asking for my Venmo or Cash App because of the Hollywood news. I do this for the love of the game. Save your money and send a few dollars to Canine Org. That's cool, too. Thank you, Chiefs Kingdom. Very cool. So I actually said jokingly, I mean, I was serious if he would have been like, what did I say? I said, like, I would, I said I would Cash App him 20 bucks or something if he was right on the Hollywood news and he was. But he said the same thing to me donate to that. So I'm down. I'm down to do that 100%, man. KC is our best friend, our little dog. So I'd do anything for her. Paying that much money for Cousins, who's going to be 36 and coming off a of pop to Achilles is crazy. No, I agree, Zinks. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. I loved MBS planting the flag after the Super Bowl. 100%. Boom. Yeah, I, I dude, I wouldn't even... I wouldn't care, I guess, if MBS came back. He's going to sign somewhere else. And, but I'm saying this. I wouldn't care if MVS came back on a much cheaper deal. But $14 million? No way. 
Ain't no way. Angelo with the six months. What up, dude? What's up, Cole? Let's freaking go, Chiefs Kingdom. Welcome to Kansas City, Marquise Brown. Yes, sir. Change to the Hollywood lamp. I agree, please. That's a great idea. Yeah, we retired the Tony lamp. It's out of commission. <laughs> it's out of commission. Kadarius needs to be gone. I mean, he very well might be. You want Hardman to come back? He very well could, depending on what he gets offered in free agency. Mike Williams? I don't know if the Chiefs can get him to. He might have a, a decent market. Although I would not complain. Nothing but love for everyone that contributed to the uh, Chiefs' success. Oh, yeah. Uh, 100%, Eric. I mean, were there times I'm frustrated with some of these guys during the regular season? Of course. But we're fans. We're passionate about the game, you know? You don't want Mike Williams. He's injury prone. I mean, he is coming off that torn ACL, and he's had some other issues. Um, ankle, hamstring, and stuff like that um, within the past few years. Who is MVS signing to? No idea. As of yet, I haven't seen anything. Hunter Renfro is definitely an option. Yes, sir. Mike Williams on a vet men's. Yeah, I think he'll get more than that, Noreen. I think Mike Williams is going to get more than that uh, by another team. Derek D with the five gifted. Let's freaking go. Winter with the three months high. What up? When you think about the defense, uh, who do you think about the most, ex uh, aside from Chris Jones? Uh, well, thanks for the three months on the let's freaking go tier. First off. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think pretty highly of Legereus Sneed, to be honest. Uh, Trent McDuffie, George Karloftis, his story is pretty crazy. Um, with him losing his dad, him growing up in Greece, like that's a pretty crazy one. But like Sneed's story is really crazy too. He spent uh, a lot of his childhood with both of his parents in prison, was raised by his grandma and his older brother. And then he lost his older brother to violence not that long ago. Uh, I think a few years ago. He was on, he was on the Chiefs when it happened. Sneed's story is really crazy, so I, I'm i always pulling for guys like that, just like big-time underdogs that, like, they sh probably shouldn't be where they are, except for, you know, God's grace, man. So I always pull for those kind of people. Um, but I, I like Drew Tranquil a lot, Nick Bolton. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge Chiefs fan, dude, so I, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that I, uh, that I think highly of back there. Hollywood Brown was jamming to Red Kingdom. Yeah. No, exactly, Trey. Cole, there's no way uh, KC three-peats after McDermott assembles the Middle Eastern Avenger. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Address the defense in the draft. Um, I mean, I feel like defense is sitting... I feel like the defense is sitting pretty good. Um, But they'll take some swings. Get a get a, a DB. You probably need to you could take a shot at D-line. Just kind of depends. Like, is there a linebacker they really like that falls to them? You know, tackle, running back, wide receiver, tight end? Are you, I mean, a guard, too. Dude, they need more draft picks. You need an offensive guard somewhere. Yeah, you definitely do. Derek, thanks again for the five gifted, dude. Appreciate you. Fletcher with the two bomb. I live in uh, Joko. Let's get a beer and talk NFL. I'm assuming that means uh, Johnson County. Dude, I'm not that far. Lee Summit, baby. I will say this, I haven't had a beer in three months, believe it or not. Um, I just stopped drinking in December. I, I don't have an end date or anything, but I just, I've just been working on my health for 2024, trying to get right. So I actually haven't had a drink in three months and just trying to eat clean, trying to just work on my body. Because like, you know, your physical health is, is important for your mental health, your spiritual health. Like I'm just trying to be well-rounded, man. Uh, when I when I started this YouTube channel, I I kind of messed up my body because I was sitting in this chair for like 16 hours a day, and it messed up my back, my knee. I need surgery on my knee. I tore my meniscus, um, so I'm just trying to trying to get right, man. I'm in the off season. I'm in I'm in uh, I'm on injured reserve almost, so I'm trying to get off of injured reserve, man. <laughs> Come on. Have a funny feeling we get a Sneed news soon. Well, please not tonight, dude, or I'll never sleep. <laughs> please not tonight. Or I'll have to go to... I will I will not sleep tonight at all. Jack Green with the five bomb. Let's go, Jack. Chiefs fan since 1966. Let's go, man. I'm just enjoying. Then I come here to get news. My kind of place. Jack, you are the man. One of the legends of the channel. Appreciate you as always. Cole, Mike Williams to KC. Wait, never mind. He got hurt, hurt mid-sentence. Dang it, man. Are, are you happy? Yeah, dude. Definitely happy. Yeah, I love what I get to do. Got a, I've been married 10 years and or almost 11 now in June and got two 
beautiful girls. Just took one of them out on a daddy-daughter date this morning. We went to coffee and a donut. She wanted a donut. So we went to this donut shop that has coffee. It's Baxter's, I think it's called. Baxter's. She got an M&M &M donut, and I got a cold brew. Uh, how many total times was Mahomes sacked last year? I cringe every time he gets swamped. Can slash will Casey get more protection for him? Yeah, I mean, I think tackle is a need. 100%. Left tackle is not solved. Um, Mahomes sacks 2023. He was sacked 27 times, I believe. Yeah, 27 times. Let's go least sacked quarterbacks 2023. He's in the bottom. Yeah, he's in the bottom somewhere. Like he he's very good at avoiding avoiding sacks. One of the best. Ravens are gonna be scary with Derrick Henry now. I mean, it helps. Derrick Henry's 30, guys. A lot of tread. A lot of tread on those tires. Um, but it does help. Because he's a threat for sure. You can't ignore that. And so is Lamar with the ball in his hands too. Yeah, American 1020. We might get Sneed news soon, but how about tomorrow? Kyle with the five. Perhaps Sneed gets traded. Where does this leave uh, Jalen Watson and Joshua Williams? I trust Watson. I only like Williams' thoughts. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be the guys fighting for that, for a more serious role. I mean, 100%. You got Nick Jones you could throw into the mix. And then remember, I didn't say this earlier, but Nazi Johnson's coming back from his torn ACL, and he was getting reps with the first-team defense in training camp. So, I mean, you're going to have a, a boxing match, basically, for the next cornerback spots. Jalen Watson played most of last season with a torn labrum in his shoulder. He just had shoulder surgery, so we got to watch out for that. He may be ready by the start of the regular season, but may not. Joshua Williams... I like Joshua Williams, dude. He's from Fayetteville State. Uh, it's a D2 HBT or HBTC, HBCU. Oh, God. Um, you know, he is one of those guys that uh, is super athletic, and I still think he hasn't peaked yet. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see how Joshua Williams does this year. Yeah, you got Jamari Connor as well. He's a safety, but he can play all over the secondary. So a lot of bright spots there. I'll be curious to see, though, how they kind of maneuver that defense with Snead gone. It, it wouldn't it won't be the same, I don't think, because unless you're unless Trent McDuffie does what Snead is doing and just trailing wide receiver ones, like you don't have somebody there that just follows that guy around all game. Maybe that's McDuffie. I think he could do it. Um but we'll just have to see. I'll be intri I'm intrigued. Nazi was a starter before that ACL. Yeah, he was definitely trending towards being one. Mm-hmm. In Spags, we trust, said David Witt. Yeah, and in Dave Merritt, we trust. Their DB coach, one of the best in the game. One of the best in the game. Tim, with the 14 months. Let's go, man. Appreciate that. Heck yeah, appreciate y'all. Favorite NFL player of all time, Derek Thomas. You don't trust uh, Veach drafting wide receiver? Yeah, I mean, Brett Veach has done a really good job um, hitting on a lot of draft picks, especially like as the years have gone on, he has struggled with wide receiver and skilled position players, but he nailed Rashi Rice. So there's like a positive there. Maybe he's getting better and his team is getting better at getting the right skilled players. So I understand the hesitancy, the hesitancy there, but Rice was a hit and you can't deny it, right? Pacheco hit. You can't deny that either. And that was in the seventh round. Mahomes told him to draft him. Who? To draft Rice? Well, they tried to trade up in round one to get somebody. Maybe Zay Flowers. They tried to trade up in round one. Um, but they got blocked. Then they tried to trade out of round one. And they got blocked. But hey, I'm glad they got Rice, man. Because he's awesome. I met him. He's a really nice guy. Uh, we don't take Worthy right now. Kind of the same player as Hollywood. Well, Joel, I was just saying, you know, Hollywood's on a one-year deal. So if the Chiefs want a cost-controlled receiver for four, five years, if they pick up the fifth-year option, if they draft somebody in, in round one and they did want to go with Worthy, I'm not saying they will, um, but that's a reason why you may potentially draft him and let him kind of slow cook 
for the year and matriculate or work himself into the the offense and then if somebody like Hollywood doesn't work out long term you then have that guy or a guy that could play a similar role for years to come that's cost controlled on a rookie deal we ain't gonna get any help from the other teams no not really Charles not really man Guys, I have got to go to bed. It is 1220. I'm still need to eat dinner. I got to get up and take care of the kids in the morning. So I appreciate y'all. This was like an emergency. Let's hang out and celebrate the fact that Marquise Hollywood Brown is a chief. Veach is cooking. He's awake. He's making moves. They got Chris Jones. They got Drew Tranquil. They were signing back some of the other guys recently. Turk Wharton. They got Naughty. They got uh, the tight end, Irv Smith Jr., to raise the floor of the tight end room. Then they just drafted, or not drafted, they just signed uh, Marquise Brown. Super excited about that. American 1020 with the two. Bro, you just watched Johnny Wilson, holy smokes. Yeah, I got I to gotta take a look at him because we've been talking about him tonight. I got to take a more in-depth look. I appreciate y'all. Thanks so much for hanging out. Um, I think we'll be back for tomorrow night's Q&A. We got a, a video we're working on as well. So we got a lot of content to get out tomorrow. Appreciate y'all. I'm super stoked that the Chiefs went and got a receiver. Let's go, man. So until next time, y'all, be safe out there. Get some sleep if it's time. If it's not, be a vampire or wherever you live. Have a good day. Be kind. Let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those Chiefs?